I hope you're as excited about this video as I am. I have had to do a bunch of stuff today and I knew I was gonna film this video and I haven't been able to focus on anything because I am genuinely that excited about today's video and curious to know if these products work. So a little bit about that, I am 31 years old. I grew up doing a little bit of my makeup towards like the mid late 90s, like just kind of playing with like what my mom had. And then I really got into more makeup towards the like early 2000s. That's when I was like a teenager and could kind of have my own stuff. But I was never that girl who was like constantly playing in my mom's makeup and rubbing red lipstick all over my face. You know what I mean? I was pretty basic and I just used the basic stuff, but then again, back in the late 90s, early 2000s, we did not have the options that people have these days at the drugstore for makeup. Now you can literally get whatever finish you want, whatever coverage you want. You had really, really limited options back in the day. So let's get started with the first product before I talk about this forever. I'm gonna still talk about it as I apply my makeup, but this brings back all the feels. This is the CoverGirl Clean Liquid Foundation. I picked up the shade Buff Beige. This might be way too dark for me, but that's okay because we're just gonna kinda do this for fun. We used to call this cover up. That's like all we would call this. Any kind of liquid foundation from the drugstore was cover up. So I remember going in with my finger. There's no pump, there's none of that. It was very, very basic stuff. I would kind of shake it on my finger a little bit. I have no idea what the coverage is like here. It said it was a natural finish, so I'm hoping it's not too matte, but I'm gonna start. Actually, the color might not be too bad like this and I did pick up uh, sponges to apply this. It smells medicated or something. It's definitely fragranced and it really, really reminds me of my childhood. Oh, this video is gonna be so fun. So like I said, I picked up these little sponge wedges and this is literally what we would use. This is like pre-beauty blender. We wouldn't wet them, but we'd, I mean, that just picked up absolutely everything. Like how? Did we even, this is literally soaking up every bit of product and not leaving me with any coverage. So I, I don't think I'm gonna do that just because it's not gonna work. I'm gonna use my It Cosmetics number seven. Yeah, number seven brush instead and I'm gonna add a little bit more. I think some people used brushes back then. I just used what was available and there were no real like brushes at the drugstore. So this might end up soaking up. No, this is this is definitely better than the sponge. And if I was to wet that little sponge, I'm sure it would be a little bit better. This reminds me of my childhood so much. The color is definitely nice. I think this is more light coverage than like highlight coverage, but would I wear it again? Probably not because the smell is really overpowering. This is definitely a highly fragranced product. It says natural lightweight coverage that feels and looks fresh. So not bad. I definitely don't remember how I felt at the time about any of these products, but it was just what you used. There wasn't like a, oh my gosh, this product is so good type of situation when I was younger. It just, like I said, it was just you used the products that everybody else used and you just went with it, I guess. So now that I have my foundation on, I'm going in with the next product that I have already used today because I couldn't help myself. As soon as I bought this, I needed to put it on my lips. It's the Dr. Pepper Lip Smacker. This has a little bit of a tint to it, which is nice. I do have another lip product that I'm gonna use, but lip smackers just hit differently. I'm telling you, the texture is perfect. I don't know if it's like the kid in me or if it's just something that like, is ingrained because I pretty much only used lip smackers when I was younger, but this feels so good on the lips. It smells like Dr. Pepper. It's actually really hydrating. I don't know how good it is for your lips, but that tint is really pretty. So I'm definitely gonna be using this more often. I kinda wanna buy the like 20 pack on Target. Please comment down below and let me know what your favorite lip smacker flavor was. I think mine was either strawberry or watermelon. I was definitely a strawberry watermelon kind of girl. I don't know if I mentioned this yet, but we did not go in with any kind of primer. Primer was not a thing when I was younger. I didn't know about primer really until I, I think until I started doing makeup professionally. It just, it wasn't at all a thing. So it's just, again, crazy to think about 
how makeup has changed and all of these products that have been added. It was so basic when I did makeup. So next product, this brings back all the feels as well. This is the Maybelline cover stick. I got two shades. I got 120 light beige and I got 140 medium beige because I didn't know what color. But tell me this doesn't remind you of old school makeup. This to me was like one of the first things I thought of. I think we called this cover up too. We called our foundation cover up and we called this cover up as well. So I think I'm gonna start with medium beige. I think this is gonna be the right color. I think light beige might be way too light on me. I'm very nervous about this. I don't know at all. Actually, that doesn't look bad. It actually looks fairly good coverage as well. I don't remember how I applied concealer either. So I'm gonna just take that and kind of dab it out with my finger. I feel like I'm holding a cigarette right here. That's actually a lot creamier than I thought it was gonna be for some reason. I mean, this is definitely light coverage. So I'm gonna go in a little more ham than I typically would, but I just don't remember how this concealer performed at all. I feel like when I look at this that this would be extremely drying, but it's not at all. It's actually pretty hydrating. So I don't wanna go in and add any more, but yeah, definitely more of a light coverage concealer. Can you guys please tell me if you use any of these products still or if you know anyone who uses any of these products? I don't know a single person who uses really much of anything from CoverGirl, and it, they definitely don't use this anymore. But I gotta say, nothing looks cakey at all. Everything looks extremely radiant, so that's good. So let's go on to the next product. I vividly remember a CoverGirl compact. I don't have it. This is all I could find, like, pretty much anywhere. There were a couple of different compacts from CoverGirl, but I vividly remember a green compact, like an emerald green compact from CoverGirl, and that's what like everybody used. So I picked up this one, the CoverGirl Clean Normal Skin Pressed Powder in Creamy Natural. Wow, this lasts 36 months when you open it. That is a long time. I think this looks a little bit light for me, especially with what I've got going on. And I definitely used this, and I definitely use this on top of my cover up. So I don't use powder now, but I think given how like radiant everything is, I don't want it to go cakey, but I'm gonna try to just add a little bit of this. It doesn't look like there's too much that's coming off, so hopefully it won't give, you know. Oh yeah, that scent is so reminiscent of my childhood. Mm. Yeah, that is old school makeup. Think of like grandma makeup, right? Like, oh, that just took all of that glow down. I'm not super into that, but I know this is what I would do. So I'm gonna add it. So that is the completed base. Very, very easy, very, very simple, no frills, but I think it looks pretty good actually. It definitely looks really good in real life. So I don't know how this would hold up without a primer and a setting spray. Setting spray was also not a thing back then, but this is one that you guys have been telling me to purchase over and over again. It's the CoverGirl Cheekers Blush. I picked up the shade Natural Rose. These are really challenging to open. <laughs> All right, I most definitely used this little guy because like I said, I didn't have brushes. I just used whatever came. But I don't know how this is actually gonna um, apply the blush. So I might end up switching over, but I'm gonna give it a try. Yeah, there's no way. It's all like just right there where I had laid the brush down first. I talk about that all the time. Wherever you place your brush down first is gonna have the most pigment. So I'm gonna grab my Japanesque brush and do it this way. I wish these were bigger. You guys love these blushes and you always tell me to purchase them. They're some of your guys' favorites. It's kind of difficult to get inside there with a big old brush like this. A little dry for me. I didn't even think twice about blush when I was younger. Again, like we didn't think about radiant blush or matte blush or anything like that. It was just, you got this blush and, and you put it on your face and you were done. I like that it's hard to go overboard with this. It's a really, really light coverage blush. So if you 
are a little more timid with your blush or you like your blush a little more understated, you might like this. I'm not sure if I'd grab for it again with how that performed. I think it's a little too drying for my taste. I like more of a natural radiant blush, but not bad. The under eyes are already starting to crease, which I feel like is bound to happen with a product like this. This was very, very creamy, almost greasy. And I feel like the darkness under my eyes is already kind of popping out again, but I mean, what do you expect for something like this? You know, concealer has come a really, really long way. I also feel like I'm already starting to crease right here. So we'll see how long this lasts, but let's go in and do some shadow. This is the CoverGirl Natural Nudes Eyeshadow. When I think of the shadow I used to use, it's this. It's something that had a white color and then it was like these thin little pans with one of these, you know, sponge tip applicators that I don't like. I don't, I mean, I might try with one, maybe the like deep shade on the eyes and then I'm gonna go in with my brushes cause there's no way I can get a good blend with this. But I'm a little bit worried about this cause I have a feeling these are gonna be super chalky. Actually, that's pretty pigmented. I didn't expect it to be that pigmented. So I just went into this shade. This one is a frosty shade. That's definitely chalky. So anyway, like I was saying, I was not that girl who went in with like blue eyeshadow. That just, that wasn't my jam. I think I'm gonna just take the brown shade and put that all over the lid, starting with the sponge tip applicator. And again, we didn't have primer. We didn't do anything to our eyes. We just like went in <laughs> with our shadow and um, that was that. So I'm not gonna like prime or anything like that, but I will try to do this. I feel like my hooded eyes will not handle this very well, but I'm gonna give it a go. But yeah, I just, I was a little more understated, you know? I didn't, I didn't wear a whole bunch of like glitter on my body. I didn't wear blue eyeshadow. Maybe I had like a blue mascara or something like this. Guys, this is awful. I don't know how, I know people still use these, to apply their makeup, but this is hard. I'm not mad at the color though. I'm switching over to my brush. This is a Smith 235 brush and I'm just gonna dip into that same color. I am getting a little bit of fallout, you know, it's to be expected, but I'm just gonna throw this all over the eye. I did not go in with multiple colors, no freaking way. I might take a little bit of a glitter and like throw that in the inner corner, but yeah, I just did like one color all over. That was extremely hard to blend, like very, very hard to blend. Definitely do not recommend these, but I'm gonna go ahead and take the shimmery shade in the palette. And I wouldn't highlight the inner corner like this back then, but I gotta add something because we also didn't highlight anywhere on the face. Like I said, it was very, very basic. It was blush, concealer, foundation, a <laughs> little bit of eyeshadow. So I picked up two eyeliners. I picked up the Maybelline Define a Line Black Pencil. This specifically popped into my head when I thought about what eyeliners I use, specifically the green container. And then I also picked up the Maybelline Expert Wear Twin Eye and Brow. My cousin's grandma, has been using these for years and years and years and years and years and she'd always give these to us. So I kind of want to go in with this one because again, it just reminds me of my childhood. It even has the little end to smudge. You guys know smudging black liner everywhere was exactly what like everybody did. I don't think I did that until like high school though, you know, the like raccoon eye situation. Wow, this looks really, really creamy and really sharp. So let me go in and put this on the upper water line. That went on extremely easy. Like that is extremely creamy. It's transferring to the lower water line. I wasn't gonna go in with a black down there, but I guess I just will. See how easy that goes on? also transferring to my contact, which isn't good. And like I said, in high school, we would like go ahead and smudge it out with this. I'm not trying to look like a raccoon and we didn't take our shadow, I forgot to mention this, and apply it to the lower lash line either. It was pretty much just the eyeliner. So I'm just gonna go in a little bit and soften 
It's like all over my contact lens. <laughs> for that reason, I wouldn't grab for that again, but that really did go on super, super easy. I feel like I look so like off because I didn't take my shadow to the lower lash line, but I'm, I'm just gonna stick with it. And we've got two more steps here. If this doesn't scream, like the first makeup product you ever had in your little caboodle. I don't know what does. This is the Maybelline Great Lash. I think I repurchased this a couple years ago and tried it and wasn't a huge fan, but you know what? We're gonna give it a try again today. I did actually have a lash curler, but it was like a half lash curler. Tell me why I had a half lash curler. Like, where did I even get that? And what was I doing with that? Thinking I was like actually curling my lashes. I did just get a lash lift and a lash tint. So they're a lot darker right now and a lot more lifted. Wow, that looks really good with the lash curler. It almost touches my hood. So I'm gonna go ahead and try this. I typically like mascara a lot better. Actually, the wand is really small, which I do like a lot because I have kind of small eyes, but I typically like my mascara a couple days after I've opened it, like even a week or so after because the oxygen kind of dries it out a little bit and I like it typically better at that point, but you know what? We're just gonna try it. Ooh, not a fan. <laughs> The eyeliner is already starting to like gather in the inner corner, which is just gonna be a hot mess if you do wear this. So I definitely don't recommend that eyeliner. We definitely didn't wear false lashes ever. I don't think I wore false lashes until, again, I started doing makeup professionally, which was in college. When I think of makeup brands and I'm getting mascara, all over everywhere but when i think of like nostalgic makeup brands i think of covergirl doing like all of the face products right and then i think of l'oreal doing like lips and nails and then i think of revlon doing lips and nails as well covergirl like really cornered the market when it came to face products even when you look back into like vintage magazine ads and stuff like that, I feel like they really, really were like the only complexion products, which is funny because now I feel like nobody really uses CoverGirl. I know I have mascara kind of all over my eyes. That was hard to work with and it's not coming off. I let it sit down and dry and did what I usually do. I either take an eyeshadow brush or I take like a spoolie and I try to rub it off, but specifically right here, I can't do it. So we're just gonna let it hang out and move on to the next step. Wet n Wild lipstick. Wet n Wild was like my go-to for lipstick. I specifically do remember this shade as well. It's called Breeze C. 531C and this is definitely a me kind of color. I wore like frosty colors on my lips, which is exactly what I think this is gonna be. So let's give it a go. I do love wet and wild lipsticks. They did not used to look like this though. I think they were in a white container. I mean, who needs a lip gloss when you've got a frosted lip like this? Am I right? But honestly, I was a huge, huge fan of those Lip Smackers roll-on glosses. That was my jam. I actually found them online. I obviously couldn't get them in time for this video because I couldn't possibly wait another minute to film it, but I have them in my cart and I might still purchase them because they have a watermelon and a strawberry. And I told you guys those were like my favorite flavors. But this is it, you guys. I did take a spoolie and just kind of brush up my brows here. I did just get my brows laminated so they're like extra fluffy, but I didn't put anything in them today and I definitely didn't put anything in them back in the day. No gel, no powder, nothing. I just let them live their best life. So let's take a quick look here. Honestly, I'm not mad at this at all. I would 150% walk out the door like this with no problem. I actually think that the base looks pretty great. There's a little bit of a radiant finish to it, which I like a lot. Definitely light coverage, so if you didn't like light coverage, I don't think you'd you know like these products. The concealer does look rough. In all honesty, if I was gonna use any of these again, I would definitely use the Lip Smackers again. 
I would maybe use the Wet n Wild lipstick again. This isn't bad. Maybe the CoverGirl Cheekers. This might be just a little too matte, but I did pick up a matte version. They did have like some shimmery version. So maybe I just got the wrong one. I am eating my hair. The eyes aren't bad minus the little, you know, black spots from the mascara that I couldn't get off. Maybe that's why we always smudged our eyeliner and looked all like black around the eyes because we couldn't get any of our mascara off. But yeah, that's it you guys. I hope you had as much fun watching as I did filming and researching for this video. This was so fun. You guys have got to let me know what makeup products you used in like the 90s, early 2000s. I'm so curious. I'm gonna go online and continue to research this stuff. I learned so much about these brands and how they started. Like CoverGirl started from Noxzema, you know, that like acne brand. So they marketed a lot of their products as like clean and like helping the skin by having like acne fighting products in it and stuff like that. I learned so much and now I just wanna do a bunch of research and I wanna reread Lisa Eldridge's book because her book has like a ton of makeup history in it. So yeah, that's it. I'm gonna let you guys go. I could blab on and on and on and on about this forever. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys have any questions, as always, let me know down below. Otherwise, if you're interested in seeing any more videos from me, please subscribe. It means the absolute world to me and I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.